So, welcome everyone to the first ever Indo-Nepal virtual cultural exchange between Rosary School, Rajkot, India, and Darshana School, uh, Kathmandu, Nepal. Uh, namaste from Rosary School. Namaste from Dr. Vishal Varya. Namaste. Nepal, Rosary School. And I welcome you all in the first ever Indo-Nepal virtual cultural exchange program. Uh, heartily welcome Binod sir, uh, Dora, Urs, Mr. Urs, the students of Darshana School, the audience of Darshana School, and the students of Rosary School, as well as the audience of Rosary School. Over to you, Binod sir. So you are muted. You are on mute. Yes. Namaste, everyone. Um, I'm Binod Magar, uh, principal at Darshana School. And I'm really happy and excited at the same time today. And uh, this is something that we have been dreaming for a long time, something that we have been trying for a long time. So it's like a, a dream come true. And, uh, you know, uh, certainly uh, we owe a special thank you to Vishal sir and also Bipin sir for creating such a beautiful uh, platform of opportunities for our students to show their, you know, talents and all. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure that today's presentation is uh, going to pave a wider and a better roads for the future projects, future programs and all. And I, uh, without taking much time, because this is all about students, so I don't want to take much time. I just want to express my sincere note of uh, congratulations and greetings to both schools. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I would request uh, Dipti Ma'am and Palvi Ma'am to please introduce yourselves and the, similarly then to the faculties of uh, Darshana School and then uh, the students of Darshana School can start the presentation. Dipti Ma'am, with you first. Hello all. Uh, I think nice to meet you in uh, Nepali language that is Tapai Lai Bete Pushi Lagyo. So very, very nice to meet you. We feel very glad to have you and uh, to conduct this program and be really, really, really thankful to you and these are students and over to you, Pallavi ma'am. Namaste, good morning. Please come on. It's really a great chance to all as well as students to present our culture and introduce to you and be aware with about your culture and what your students are going to represent. It simply means a bonding between India and Nepal that we are initiating. We are very much thankful to you all. Thank you. Yes, Subhaksha ma'am and uh, Binod, uh, Bipin sir, can you introduce yourself and then let the students start the session. Namaste all the... Namaste all the educators, students, parents, everyone present here. This is me, Subhiksha Karka from Darshna School and I'm very glad to be part of such an amazing program and I believe from this program, our students will learn uh, learn many things about your culture and obviously your students will also learn about our culture and I am also personally very glad to be part of this. Thank you. Namaste, it's me. Namaste. Oh, I'm just mic check now. And Namaste, it's me, Bipin Adhigari from Nepal, Darshan High School. And I'm a computer teacher here. And, and I just want to say, I'm just excited for this meeting and looking forward to, forward to it. And that's all. Thank you. Teachrat, sir, can we have your introduction, please? Yes, sir. Teachrat, sir, is here. Yes, sir. Okay, namaste to you all. Uh, it's me, Teachrat Sivakuti. Uh, as a social teacher, I am working in this Darshan High School. And I'm very glad to be here as a part of this virtual conversation ex pro cultural action program of students. Uh, thank you. And yes, to the lovely audience here, before we start our session, I want everyone, every of the audience from the, both the schools to please join the hands together, clap for the people uh, joining us together. 
yes rosary school students kindly please clap tali padvi joye okay so i would request uh the students of uh, uh, darshana school to please start their presentation and we are eagerly waiting for it so bipin sir who is going to present the screen so uh namaste and good afternoon everyone it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this cultural exchange program between darshana school nepal and rosary school india today we are here to explore the rich cultural heritage of nepal a country known for its majestic mountains vibrant traditions and diverse communities nepal is a melting pot of various ethnic groups and is home to a rich tapestry of cultures and traditions that has been passed down from generation to generation in this presentation we will delve into the cultural heritage of nepal and examine the ways in which it has shaped the country's identity and contributed to its unique charm so let's begin our journey and discover the cultural treasures of nepal together before further starting i would also like to thank Darshana and Rosary School together for providing we students a wonderful learning platform. Now I would like to give this floor to my mate. Thank you. Namaste everyone. It's me Riti Karka. So let's know about Nepal in the world. Today I'm going to talk about Nepal in the world. Nepal is a country that lies in the south part of Asia. It's a South Asian country which is surrounded by two gigantic and powerful country. which are india and china china covers nepal from the north and india covers nepal from all other all over other directions talking about nepal it covers 0.03% of land in the world it falls on the longitude 28.439 it falls on 28.3949 degree to the north and 84.1240 degree to the east the area of nepal is 147516 km square the uh, talking about the average distance from east to west it is 885 km and from north to south is 193 km nepal has about 29 population approximately nepal is a country having a unique kind of flag that is triangular in shape it is only the flag in the whole world having non quadrilateral shape Nepal is divided into three geographical regions they are Sarai Hilli and Himalayan ne Nepal is a country having small geographical area but here we can experience while traveling the whole world it has the highest point in the whole world which is mount everest which is 8848.86 meter while the lowest point of nepal is thanusa musahaniya 59 meter Thus, it shows the geographical diversity of Nepal. Next slide. Soil um, thunga full ka hami ute mala Nepali sarva bombay phaili eka mechi mahakali. These lines are taken from our national anthem, which clearly depicts our diversity. Nepal is a multicultural, multiracial, multilinguistic, and multiethnic country. It is a country with indigenous nationality. Nepal can be regarded as a culturally rich country. The unity in diversity of Nepal has been considered as important national heritage, which has to be maintained and strengthened. Although Nepal has been a Hindu state for two centuries, there is no any record of religious conflict in Nepal. All Nepalese respect the national national feeling of unity in diversity. The concept of unity in diversity was accepted by the state after the unification of Nepal by late King Prithvi Narayan Shah. There is a saying in Nepali, "Charja chhotis barna." Nepal charja chhotis barna to charja full bari ho, which means that Nepal is home to people of four castes and thirty-six subcastes. 
there's been a home to people of different ethnic groups, religion, culture, etc. In which more than 60 ethnic groups reside with their own culture, religion, and language. It consists of different languages and culture, which has been creating a rich and unique culture. Wow, Nepal is an interesting country or a certain topic to discuss about its cultural heritage or diversity, isn't it? So now I would like to share my flow with my mate. Namaste everyone. I am Sima Karki and today I am going to explain about geographical regions of Nepal. There are three geographical regions of Nepal, which are Tarai region, Hindi region and Himalayan region. At first, I would like to explain about Tarai region. The plains of Nepal are known as Tarai region. It covers 17% of the total land of Nepal with 53.77% of people living here. The average elevation is below 600 meters. Uh, uh, can you, the picture displayed on screen shows Tharu women performing cultural dance wearing their ethnic attire. Uh, the, the houses in Tarai region are made up of mud. People in People in Tarai region wear dhoti and kurta by male and faria and solo by female. Tarai region is also known as the house of house of grain. The major heritage sites which fall under Tarai region are Chitwan National Park, which is also the first national park of Nepal, and Lumbini, Janakpur, etc. Now we will be talking about Hindi region. The region which lies between Tarai region and Himalayan region is known as Hindi region. It covers 68% of the total land of Nepal with 40.25% of people living here. The average elevation ranges from 600 meter to 3,300 meter. The picture displayed on screen shows men wearing Dora Surwal and female wearing Gunyu Cholo. The temperature in Hilly region is moderate. The major languages spoken by people living in Hilly region are Niwari, Gurung, Tamang, and Nepali. The houses in Tarai region are made up of wood. Uh, the the major heritage sites which fall under Hilly region are Pasupatinath Temple, a very well known temple which you guys also may know, and the Tal Barai, Halesi Mahadev, etc. The next topic that we are going to look over is Himalayan region. Eight of the world's tallest mountain of the world, including the world's tallest mountain, which is Mount Everest, lies lies here. It covers 15% of the total land of Nepal with no, with 40.25% of people living over here. The major elevation ranges from 3,300 meter to 8,850 meter. The languages spoken in Himalayan region are Nepali, Tamang, Serpa, and Thakali. The climate here is alpine. Male we the picture displayed on screen shows male wearing wantas and women wearing wanzu, whereas Boku and Dota are both worn by male and female. The house in Himalayan region are made up of stone. The major heritage which fall under Himalayan region is Sagarmatha National Park. Now I would like to call my friend for the further explanation. Namaste everyone. It's me Subhigya. Um, as my mate stated, Nepal has various regions and cultures. There are nine main religions followed in Nepal. 
as shown in the chart, Hinduism is the most followed religion in Nepal, with 81.3% of the total population in Nepal following it, where Buddhism stands second with 9.04% of the Nepali people following it. As shown in the as displayed, uh, uh, ethnic dresses are worn by different cultures of Nepal. Moving on, the next topic we are going to discuss is the major festivals celebrated in Nepal. Uh, as, you could have, as you could have come to an idea that Nepal is a diversified country, not only geographically, but also culturally. The different cultures share their uh, festivals with a great sense of joy and belongingness. Some of the major festivals well known in the context of Nepal are listed below. Dosai and Tihar. These two festivals are the main festivals mostly celebrated by Hindu people in Nepal. Tihar is celebrated for five days, where Dosai is celebrated for 15 days. Goddess Lakshmi is worshipped in Tihar and Goddess Durga is worshipped in Dosai. The next topic we are going to cover is Toran La. Toran La is the first biggest festival of Thakali people living in Nepal. This festival falls on the same day as, on, as Holi on the month of March and lasts for about three days before and after the night of the full moon. They worship their ancestors for their contribution to the society in this festival. The next festival we're going to cover is Losar. Losar is also known as, is Losar, the meaning of Losar is ethnic new year. There are different types of Losar which are celebrated. Some of them are Sonam Losar, Tamu Losar, and Gyapo Losar. The next topic we are going to cover are the Jatras celebrated in Nepal. Jatras are the street festival or carnivals. Or carnivals. The first Jatra we are going to talk, talk about is Gai Jatra. Gai Jatra is celebrated mostly by Nevari people to mourn the death of their loved ones. Children dress up as cows and in other comedic drags in various cities. The next Jatra we are going to cover is Indra Jatra. Indra Jatra is marked by the dances of deities and demons. Indra Jatra uh, is celebrated on the honor of uh, Indra, the god of heaven. Gode Jatra. Gode Jatra is a form is a competition carried out is is a form of competition carried out in parades and it is um, regulated by the Nepali army on the presence of the uh, heads of the state. Nepali people mark this Jatra with a feast. The next Jatra we're going to cover is Biscuit Jatra. Biscuit Jatra is another well-known Jatra in Nepal. This is celebrated in the first month of the Nepali calendar Bikram Sambal. This heralds the start of the Nepali New Year, pulling of chariots of two deities, the wrathful god Bhairav and the goddess Badarkali. The next Jatra we are going to cover is Bodo Jatra. Bodo Jatra is celebrated at Patan in Kathmandu. Ratram Bachendra Nath is a tallest Charvet which is 60 feet tall. Ratum, uh, the start of Bodo Jatra marks the end of Ratram Bachendra Nath Jatra. Now I would like to pass the stage to my mate for further explanation. Hello and namaste to everyone. This is Sanmi Neopani, a student from Darsana School. I'm going to continue from where my mate has forwarded up to. As you can see in the screen, that Nepal has some of the heritage sites that are enlisted in the UNESCO. Pasupatinath Temple, Bodhanath Stupa, Swambhanath Temple, the Kathmandu Darbar Square, Patan Darbar Square, Bhaktapur Darbar Square, Changunaran Temple and Lumbini. These are the most precious world heritage sites that are enlisted in UNESCO from Nepal. Now let's move on to Paspatinath Temple. You guys may have heard of Paspatinath Temple. Paspatinath Temple is a well-renowned temple which is the most popular temple in Nepal. Paspatinath Temple is located at Bagmati Riverside, Kathmandu. Previously, so Sivaratri, you guys may have heard of Sivaratri, right? 
A festival celebrated to worship the Lord Shiva was well celebrated among the Nepali people. A big arati was done by the Pandit which set a trend among the local people. A crowd of people made the festival even more fascinating. What is more even interesting is the history. In the Mahabharat, Pandavs killed their cousins in order to win the war. They were suffering due to the war which made them want to go for blessing to the Lord Shiva. But the Lord Shiva was alone affected due to the war. So he hid and transformed himself into a bull. The Pandavs were searching Shiva in Banaras, India, which used to be Lord Shiva's favorite temple. Bhimma, who was also in search for Lord Shiva, was in between two mountains. When he saw a bull, he was so sure that that was Lord Shiva. When he caught the Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva disappeared into the ground. And when he again tried to reform into his own state of body, his head was in Pasupati Nath and his hump was in Kedarnath. That's how the history was linked together between India and Nepal. Well, that's how it goes. Pasupati Nath is believed to be built by Prasupreksha of Somadeva dynasty. According to the present status, Western style crematoriums have been structured and some of the different rituals are also being performed to worship the Lord Shiva. Now moving forward to Lumbini. Well, you guys have may heard about Lumbini. The first word that pops into our mind when we hear the word Lumbini is Buddha. Buddha is the birthplace Lumbini is the birthplace of Gautam Buddha. Lumbini uh, is located at Rupandhi district, Lumbini province. To showcase Asuka's devotion, he built a large stone pillar with inscriptions. Lumbini, the lovely in Sanskrit. Lumbini has a flame that never ends, that people makes wants to visit the place desirely. The garden of Lumbini was changed into a place. Wait, wait, wait. Have you guys heard that if the flame that never ends happens to extinguish, the world will be destroyed? Well, that's kind of creepy. Asuka built the pillar as for the commemoration of Buddha and the religion Buddhism. He built in and the inscription was reorganized. According to the researches and the sources of information, Buddha's mother Maya Devi was traveling from Kapil Bastu to her parents' home. At the way, she went in labor. People has it say that she gave birth to the baby standing between two sal trees in Lumbini with no pain. Now that seems cool. Myths also say that the baby spoke as soon as he, won he was born and took seven steps. Maya Devi died after the seven, stays, seven days of giving birth to Buddha. Well, that's kind of a coincidence. That's why she's also called Mahamaya. She gave birth to Buddha, the light of Asia. Now, moving on to Janaki Temple. Janaki Temple is the beauty of Janakpur. It is located at Janaki Jok Janakpur. Janaki te Temple is used in uh, the architecture, Hindu Kwari Nepali architecture is being used to build the Janaki temple. It was built by Queen Brisan Banu Kuari of Tika Marga from central India in 1911 AD. The most fun fact is that about Janaki temple is that it is mostly known for Mithila painting and these paintings is considered as good luck in people's life. King Janak, who was the popular king, ruled the city. He believed in soul more than body. That's what made him famous among the people. King Janak had a daughter, Sita. Sita is also known as the wife of Ram. Legend has it said that the Sita was the incarnation of Parvati. According to the present status of Janakpur, re reconstruction of the Janaki temple is well going and the architect is being redone. Festivals like Bibaha Panchami, Ram Namami, Dasai, Tihar, Chat is being celebrated at Janaki Temple. Janaki Temple is also named as Naulakhi Mandir by the locals. It is constructed in the mixed style of Mughal and Hindi architecture. Now let's move on to the Bhaktapur Darva Square, Kathman Darva Square, and the Patan Darva Square. The three squares. They are the most important three squares. The Bhaktapur Darva Square is located at Bhaktapur. And Patan Darva Square, Kathmandu, and Kathmandu Darva Square is located at Kathmandu. 
the reconstruction is well going after the destruction of temple by the 2072 BS earthquake. Well, Kathmandu Darbar Square has a Kumari girl. And the Kumari is a girl who is chosen as a living god. People worship the Kumari in the Kumari girl. It is believed that the Kumari is a god that should be worshipped regularly. Kumari is three stays in the Kumari girl until she gets menstruation. As per the people's belief and superstition, Kumari is not allowed to marry any person. And if she smiles, that means the person is considered as dead. Well, that's kind of bizarre. Concluding that, I want to call my friend and share the screen. Thank you, Anvi. Now I would like to further move on the slides to Panja Kashmiri Takya Masjid. So this is the oldest mosque existing in Nepal. And as you can see in the figure, this is how it looks like. So the Panja Kashmiri Takya Masjid is where Muslims go and Muslims go to strengthen their relationship with their creator, rekindle their spirituality, and meet their Muslim brethren. This is where they spend the most of their time after their home and work. They take a visit around here at least twice a week, if not thrice or sometimes five times a week. So now, and it is also located in Kathmandu Darwar Mark. So now, who built this mosque is the question. So it is a very interesting answer. The mosque was actually built by Kashmiri people after they came in Nepal for the thread during the rule of King Ratna Malla in the peculiar Malla state. As at that period, the Nepal was not unified and Nepal was all scattered in different states. The construction was over and the mosque was finally built only in the rule of King Pratap Malla. But actually, they weren't the ones to build this mosque, the current form of the mosque. It was Prithvi Narantaha who did it, the founder of the modern Nepal, as he was the one to start the unification in Nepal. So now the question is, why did he do it? So here is the answer why. It was because in that peculiar time, there was a conflict in Kashmir. And the Kashmir people had to forcefully migrate to a safer place, which turned out to be Nepal. And they turned to be an important and impacting role in the unification phase by reenacting as heirs for Pitvinar and Saha, which helped a lot to conquer the Mala state. So it, it is vivid from here that Pitvinar and Saha had gifted them the reconstructed version of the mosque as the Kashmiri people helped him a lot. So now talking about the present status of this mosque, uh, we can say that government has been allocating resources for its revenue. And the financial support has been provided for the reconstruction, paintings, and construction of the traditional gate. So its significance is that it is the oldest mosque uh, existing in Nepal. It is about 500 years old. It is also the center of authority for Muslims. And it also provides educational and conflict regulation solutions and services. So moving on. So now talking about religious harmony, first let us know what religious harmony is. So religious harmony is the state or condition in which people of every religion respect each other and live in a particular place peacefully. So uh, now Nepal is a small country which has about approximately 10 religions. But still up to now, up till the date, Nepal has not witnessed any religious, no, religious regional conflict. So how can we say that, like, I'm not saying just, I'm not just verbally saying, I have some facts to prove that Nepal is a religious, harmonious country. So these are displayed in the screen as shown. The first is a royal palace of Hindu king, which is now a museum, is located just beside a mosque. This can vividly show that there is a very good relation between Hinduism and Islam in Nepal. Second is the largest religion here in Nepal, existing in Nepal, is, as you know, Hinduism. And the second largest is Buddhism. But Christianity, talking about Christianity, is, it's about less than 1%, but it is in the phase of increasing. So it can show that there is no 
personal hate or any religious conflict between religions in Nepal. And people have been living peacefully here. Next is all festivals are celebrated by every religion in Nepal. Like talking, like let's take example of Buddha Zayanti. Even though it's a Buddhist festival, the people following Hinduism and Islam also celebrate it with equal joy and fun. Next is the annual pilgrimage of Muslims are, are been taken in account by the government. And final point is that Buddhism and Hinduism being closely related. Like there are some particular facts that can prove that Buddhism and Hinduism are closely related in Nepal. Irrespective of other nations, like in other nations, Buddhism and Hinduism are regarded as two different religions. But here in Nepal, they are kind of very closely related. For example, this holy sign Om is very significant and very important in both religions. And also, let's take an example of the major festival of Hinduism, that is Dasa and Tihar. Dasa and Tihar is celebrated with equal joy even by the Buddhist people. So these facts can prove that Nepal is a country, even though it is a small country, it is a country that has got religious tolerance and has religious harmony. So moving on. So now as we have reached to the concluding state, now to summarize it all, we can finally say that I'm really sorry uh, for the disturbance. Think, sir, that, that is fine. Uh, uh, we'll need to spread it up uh, over yeah. here. I really appreciate the efforts the students have made for the school. And uh, we'll be getting a little less time to explain because uh, this is the last lecture here. So uh, I would request uh, uh, students of Rosary School to please share their screen. And uh, yeah. So. <coughs> Did the chat ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please share the screen. In the meantime, I would request the audience, uh, the Rosary School students, Team Tali Kaman for students of Darshana School. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good afternoon, respected sir, uh, sir and teacher, and my old, all my dear friends. I'm obliged to share our cultural information with you. Our first topic is political boundaries. Hold on, please. Uh, we need to see the slides. In political boundaries, hold on, India this is the picture. Yes, sir. There is, you need there to is, present the slides. Your screen is not shared. Sir, it is shared. Does anyone it see is. the screen? Okay. Straight up. Wait. That's better now. Okay, sir. Make the slide show on, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it okay now? Better. One. Good afternoon, respected sir, teachers, and all my dear friends. Today. I am obliged to share our Indian culture's information with you. Our first topic is political boundaries. Uh, 
I would request Pratik sir to kindly just move into that room and see what's going on. India is the union of states. I don't use it for self-reliance. Secular democracy. Please continue. Now it seems okay. Please continue. Okay, sir. Secular democratic republic with a parliament system of government. There are 29 states and 8 human territories in the country. Broadly, India is divided into six major zones East India, West India, North India, South India, North, East India, and Central India. You can see this in the map. Demography. Sex ratio, sex ratio, females per thousand male. In 1951, 946, and in 2021, 1020. You can see in the graph, population, then 1951, 361 million. Now, 2022, 1.4 billion. Age-wise population in India, 39 percent of population is of age 21 to 30 years so we can say that india is the country of young people rural and urban population of india you can see in the graph rural blue lines for the rural population and red line for the Ma'am, you are stuck now. Beginning of the world, most literally uh, uh, diversified uh, areas, total, lang uh, total of 121 languages and two, uh, 270 mother tongues. India has total official language as Hindi and English and 22 scheduled languages as far as 18th scheduled constitution of India. Uh, most spoken language of uh, uh, East, uh, each state of India is uh, Hindi, Gujarati and Marathi and etc. Utsav Priya Khalu Manushya means every uh, human loves best. India's festivals are divided in five categories. Uh, victory of good over evil, Diwali and Holi. Uh, there are seasonal festivals like Onam, Makasankranti and Lohi. Uh, birthday anniversary and, uh, like Janmashtami, Mahashivratri, Ganesh Chaturthi. And celebrating relationship between couples and siblings are like Karvachot and Rakshabhatan. National festivals, Independence, uh, Independence Day, 15th August and Republic Day, 26th January. Uh, there are some pictures of our uh, religious festivals. Uh, first is uh, Ganesh Chaturthi, Jarmastami, Raksha Bandhan, Dashera, Diwali, Christmas, uh, Makar Sankranti, uh, Rath Yatra, and etc. Now, my friend. Basically, India is a secular country and all religions of India, which was originated itself in India, is the Sanatan Dharam. The word Sanatan means which has no beginning and no end. It is also the oldest religion in the world. After that, the Jainism and Buddhism also originated in Indian subcontinent at around 500 BCE. Next, it would be Christianity who came to India in 52 AD, around the 52 AD. Nextly, in around the 650 AD, Islam religion came to India. Then, Parsi religion came to India in around 850 AD. After that, 
the Sikhism was founded in India by the Guru Nanak in the year 1469 AD. According to 2011 census, 79.8% uh, people follow Hindu religion, 14.2% people follow Muslim religion, 2.3% uh, people follow Christianity, 1.7% people follow Sikh religion, and the other 2.2% uh, other people follow the other and unspecified religions. Hinduism, Jainism, Sikhism, and Buddhism were established in India and Indian subcontinent. Our culture is a collection of a number of minor cultures. So, so as you can see that this is the, the temple of Kedarnath, which represents the Hinduism. This is the, gold, uh, this is the golden temple of Amritsar, which represents the Sikhism in India. at uh, Sarnath and it represents Buddhism in India. So thank you for listening to me. Now my friend Priyal Bhatt will continue. My respectful teacher and my dear friends, good afternoon. My name is Bhatt Priyal. Today I am going to tell you about Eastern India. There are so many states like Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, and West Bengal. They take momos, rasmalai, rasgulla, and machir jhol. If you will go to West Indian, there are so many states like Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, and Goa, and Gujarat. They take dhokla, khakra, khandvi, poha, Vada Pao and Methi Ke Parathe. North India includes the state of Punjab, Haryana, Jammu Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Delhi. They take Chole Bhature, Dal Makhni, Gol Gappe, etc. The state of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala in southern states, they take Dosa, Idli, coffee, coconut water, etc. So this is all from my side. Now, my friend, yes, we will continue. Good afternoon. I think we have some internet delays here, and uh, this is why uh, it is getting stuck. Yeah, please continue the presentation. Okay, yes, sir. In West Bengal, male wears kurta and dhoti, and female wears sona churi sari. Like that, you can also see here the attire of Mizoram, Nagaland, and Assam. Next, we have North India. In Punjab, male wears kurta and pajama, and with turban, and uh, female wears patiala suit with full curry tunnery. Like that, you can also see the picture of Kashmir, Bihar, and UP. In West India, Gujarati men wears Kediya Choli and female wears Chaniya Choli. This is this is famous costume of India. In South India, Tamil Nadu men wears short, vesti, and upavastra. And female wears peti, putti sari. People of Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana have flat roof house in rural area. People live in hut. In majority, people live in high-rise two-story houses. Dwelling is forest are bamboo houses. Thank you.
So are, are we done? Tell me, teacher. All right. Yeah. So that comes to the conclusion of uh, the cultural exchange uh, session we are having. Uh, I apologize the delay of uh, uh, internet the issues. The boundaries, the dwellings, the dressing, they tried there a lot. Thank you. Yeah. You can mute there, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, once again, uh, uh, Dipti, can you please mute your mic? Sir, we can't hear you. Can you please mute the mic? No, sir. Not yet. Not audible, sir. You need to mute your mic. Tomorrow, mic band karo. Uh, so, Vinod sir, uh, that's uh, from our side, and uh, uh, this is a cultural exchange program that we had been uh, imagining, and we have been excited to uh, learn about both the countries. Uh, I would just request uh, the both the schools to share the presentation with each other so that we can take it in our lecture, the slides that you have prepared. And you can take the slides into your lecture of social science that you have prepared, that we have prepared. So uh, uh, thank you one and all for joining this session. A special thanks to uh, Urs and Dora for joining uh, this session. Uh, thank you the Darshana School for giving us an opportunity to have cultural exchange and to learn about the Nepal tradition and culture. And uh, yeah. So, uh, anything else, uh, Vinod sir, would like to say something? Uh, okay, uh, nothing much, uh, Vishal sir. Thank you very much for making us a part of this historic uh, venture. And uh, we are looking forward to have more uh, presentations in the days to come, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, I just want to, on behalf of the entire team of Darshan High School, I would like to express my thank you to the, uh, the team of teachers and the students for uh, providing us such inside uh, you know information about india culture people etc etc thank you thank you sir i would just uh, state here that the students who have attended the session the audience uh, they are eligible for a participation certificate uh, you will be given a feedback form link and uh, on filling up the feedback form link uh, feedback form you will be receiving a certificate of participation the students uh, who have presented the slides uh, will be eligible for receiving a, an appreciation certificate so I would request uh, Bipin sir to share the name of such students and the teachers who have participated for preparing the presentation. And we shall be sharing the certificates to those students uh, through, to, uh, to, through email to you. So that comes to the end of the, this program. Uh, thank you very much, one and all, for joining this session. And we wish to conduct many more such sessions with Darshana School in future. Thank you. And I'll just end the recording and we can uh, leave the meeting.